Thank you. It being on at about 7 p.m., the uh, Foxborough Planning Board will come to uh, order. Um, and the old business planner report. We could just remind everybody that this meeting oh, is yes. being recorded. And for for, for uh, the public's edification, um, this meeting is being recorded. There may be people on Zoom as well if they want to call in. And uh, you should just be aware of that and for the record. Um, do you have a planner's report? I do have a planner's report, but well, it's, not, it's, it's up here. It's okay, not that's on fine. paper. You can, you can lay it on us. Okay. Um, so uh, as of, uh, well, as of Monday, we now have our two new town manager, John Cordaire, and um, he had a over, three-day overlap with um, Bill Keegan, but as of today, Bill Keegan did not come to work. So John is now officially the man in charge, so I'm sure we'll be meeting him. I'm, you know, I'll suggest he come to a planning board meeting, but we'll give him a a minute to kind of, he's you know meeting everybody frantically right now, so maybe we give him a minute for that. That's but what um, want to do? What come meet us? Yeah, come meet I know. us. <laughs> he's I know. Why wouldn't he? Of course he does. Um, People. So that's that's big news, obviously for the town. And uh, but we have all you know we know where everything will go well, and we'll just um, be working with a new manager. Um, parking lot renewals are coming up. The uh, special permits for the temporary lots. Um, Diana, do you know what month do we schedule that yet? Uh, so May 11th um, was what we're targeting for um, those hearings. As always, we've had some trouble with attendance lately. So um, as always, if you could just, the minute you find out there's attendance problems, I'm not looking at any one of you. Um, <laughs> so as, a as a collective. Yes. You know. <laughs> um, you know, we need to just just let us know so that we can do it. Because, like for example, these um, public hearing on the parking lots, those are time sensitive. You know, they expire June 30th, so we have to make sure we get these taken care of, get appeals periods over and whatnot. So just keep us surprised if and try to keep an eye on that calendar. Well, um, what is the appeals period on those? It's a special permit, so it'd be 20 day. 20 days. Yeah. Um, Auditorium is underway. We're doing an um, uh, architectural assessment of that property just with respect to systems and conditions and whatnot to get an idea. I think I've mentioned that to get an idea of what the town is sitting on. We did. Get, um, we are also having the hazardous materials assessed to see what the cost might be. We all assume there'd be remediation. So we'll stay tuned for that. That's going to take a little time. They're just going to get in there next week, um, at least the, uh, the architectural guys. Um, the Walnut Street 40B project uh, was approved. Well, the board voted to approve the project, but they have not yet issued, written or issued a decision. So, but it was a three to zero vote, so we anticipate it going forward through the decision process. Um, but that's very exciting for the town. And um, in fact, yesterday when I was at the State House, I saw Ashley Stolba. She's the undersecretary that was responsible for the MassWorks grant. So I was able to tell her that we, that the, the project was approved and she already knew. She actually said, oh, we are watching, we are monitoring. She's like, that's great news, you know, that's fabulous. So there, you know, the state is very uh, invested in this process as well. So I was shocked she already knew. It was probably Jay Barrows who told her, but still it was like, wow, they're paying attention. Um, I did, uh, Stephen Fry reached out to me uh, regarding 29 Wall Street site visit. He suggested tomorrow. I told him I wasn't available. It was, it was, it was so much notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was a day or so ago, but yeah, yeah he, he suggested tomorrow, but I said I'm not in tomorrow. I'm not, by the way, I'm not in tomorrow. So um, he's going to shoot for maybe next week. So I'll keep you posted on that. He does have um, occupants for some commercial building. I believe it's an attorney mm -hmm. and maybe something else. So great. Um, I don't know any details on that, but I believe um, that's the case. Um, we had the Mass Gaming Commission come out and visit last week, I think, to take a look at all our files for our grants and kind of do a mini audit. And uh, I think we did okay. I'm not in jail. Um, so, uh, but, you know, we, and we are, um, we just submitted a whole questionnaire in support of our next round of grants that we've asked for. So I meant to bring down, and I forgot, the brochure and business cards, but we actually have like brochure and business cards. And um, two weeks ago, I went to Patriot Place and, um, the Massachusetts Visitor and Convention Bureau had brought in 
um, had a program called Destination, Destination New England, and they brought in um, hundreds and hundreds of tour operators from all over the world, and they basically bring them all over the region. You know, from from Springfield, their fa one of their favorite places was um, the Basketball Hall of Fame, but they were also as far down as Yarmouth, I and mean, they were all over the state and the region, and. Um, because of our tourism effort, they spent an afternoon at the Rentham Village Outlet, and then they came over to Patriot Place, and we hosted them for lunch. So I sat at lunch with, I think it was seven operators from the Netherlands and one from Belgium, and we talked about the region. So it was kind of cool. So we're starting to get a little legs, as we say, and they seem to be interested in the region. And, and they were saying, we don't only, only want to see a city, we want to see these small towns. So hopefully our small town will be one that interests future um, tourists. And then lastly, today I was in Falmouth because, ta-da, I now have a new certificate. Um, I just took a class called Supervisory Leadership Development Program. So um, I was just in Falmouth all day and did this for three days. And well, not three days, consecutive days, but learning how to be a better supervisor. So I um, got my little certificate a couple hours ago. And well, is it true? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't yeah, practiced cool. yet. <laughs> They're going to love it. You know, I was like laughing thinking of them because, you know, the program is like in a binder this thick and it has all these conversation starters with your employees. See, look at that face. I could call Diana in for meetings and we could talk about how she could have more fulfillment. And we're going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, that's all my report like for the day. <laughs> that's all I have for the day. Thanks. Okay. So... Uh, we have some minutes that we need to approve, February 23rd, March 2nd, and March 31st. I'd make a motion to approve the uh, minutes for February 23rd as submitted. I'll second that. Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I can't make this one. Uh, March 2nd. Anybody I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written for March 2nd. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain on that. And March 31st, is there anyone? Yep. I'd make that motion that we approve March 31st minutes as submitted. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, quick <coughs> question on uh, procedure here, Paige. Yes, because sir. all these WARN articles are affiliated, can we just open one thing, or do we have to open each one individually? Well, the way it's kind of advertised is uh, individual, right, Gabby? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, then that's the way we'll do it. Great. Or we could do something else if you wanted to in the meantime, and then get back to it and do them all at once, once it's past 7, 15. 15. Uh -oh. Right, so we have eight minutes right now that minimum that we have to do something with. Okay. So. Right. Um, are the folks here for the informal discussion? They are. Would you like to come up early? Yeah. Would you like to come up early? I, w I would love it. <laughs> Let's do that. So let me um, share my screen. Is anybody on Zoom? Actually, you have your own. Um, this one's a little different from what you have in front of you, but good evening. For the record, my name is Bill Buckley from Bay Colony Group. And up, I'm here representing the applicant, uh, CrossFit Torque and Chase Lumber. <clears throat> for an expansion of the CrossFit Torque facility located at 127 Washington Street. Excuse me for my voice. So um, what I've showed you here up, up on the board, note on what you have there, is this is the uh, CrossFit Torque it was originally approved by the board in 2013. And what that is, it was it, back then, it was a uh, 4,000 square foot facility. <clears throat> and this is on one piece of property. So Chase Lumber and this facility is on one piece. So it's all combined, it's two, uh, multiple uses on one piece. So what this was, was a, a fitness studio. It's not really a gym, it's a fitness studio, which is, um, I think is different from a gym. It's, the place is not packed early in the morning or during the day and stuff. This is, these are mostly classes, or actually they're all classes that are held throughout the day and early evening. And at the time, we, this was uh, Don Chase's daughter, and uh, she still runs it. And what we did is at the time, this heavy gray area, 
this was parking that was added at the time, and then this this is the fitness studio, and this was pretty close to what they ag actually built. And then I think most everybody knows where Chase Lumber is. So if you drive up there, you'll see you'll, you'll come in. There's two entrances. There's parking in the front. There's parking over here on the side. Of course, these spaces are gone now. They have a gravel parking lot that's been there forever. I went back on Google Earth as far back as they go, and it's always been there. Um, and then there's, of course, the drive around in the, uh, the building. So, so um, I just wanted to show you that, and now I'm going to put up the next drawing, which is the one you have in front of you. So this is the, uh, the drawing of what they would like to do. So they've been successful in their business, and what they're proposing is the construction of a 3,200 square foot addition at the, rear of the pro at the rear of the existing building. So the existing building is 80 feet wide, 80 feet wide, and it's 50 feet deep. This addition will be 80 feet wide and about 40 feet deep. And it will be the same type of building as um, it's there now. It's a metal building, it's red. And uh, the, actually the, the roof slopes to the rear, this will continue to slope to the rear. There's plenty of height in there um, for the building. And <clears throat> so it's a pretty straightforward and vanilla project. Um, the way this existing fitness studio is, is a drain system along in the back here that um, captures the roof runoff and infiltrates it up to a certain amount. But there's also down here, there's a catch basin, which there's no grades on here, so you can't see it. But everything comes out of this parking lot goes down into this catch basin and it gets pumped up to a, a stormwater basin in the back here and then it drains off toward Rentham. The reason for that is because I think you've heard me say it before is Mass DOT will not let you do a direct connection into their um, drain systems and you can see on this site it's not like there's room to put basins or anything so um, we had to go that route. But So in this particular case what we're proposing what you see here is we don't, we don't want to build more parking. <coughs> and when I meet with my clients whenever I have a, a site plan approval or anything, I always ask them, <clears throat> one of the questions I ask them is, we're required by zoning to build you a certain amount of parking, but how much parking do you need for your business? Sometimes it's more than what zoning requires. Most of the time it's not, um, but we just, just go with it. But in this particular case, we don't want to build any more parking. They, they think that this is more than adequate for what they want to do. Um, so what we're going to be coming before the board with is we'll be coming, um, this is a special permit because it's in a water resource protection district, but under our zoning, under a section, what section is it, 6.1.6, .6, it allows a 25% reduction by special permit. So the board can grant a reduction in the amount of parking required to be built by special permit. So what does that mean? So in this particular case, this facility needs 79 spaces. Up in the corner there, you can read it on your thing. So we need a total of 79 spaces. What we have here is um, 45 spaces, but we need 59. 59 is 75% of, of uh, 79. So what we want to do here is we will capture the additional parking in the back of the Chase Lumber Building, and we'll stripe this additional parking back here, which I doubt anybody will ever use, but we'll stripe it so that it exists on the site. So the site itself will have the required number of striped spaces. And the bylaw also requires us to set aside the area for the additional parking. So the additional parking would be about 20, 21 spaces. So what we would do is set aside this area here in the kind of brownish color where this is the existing gravel area where they park now anyways. And we would set that aside to be the future parking that if it was ever required, um, it, would be, um, it would be available again, which is re required by the bylaw. So that's about it. Um, and we just wanted to get the board's take on this, on this, I mean, on the design. If there's any issues, sometimes things come up that we don't know about and our clients don't tell us about. But um, also, we need to make sure that the board is comfortable with the granting the special permit for the 25% reduction. 
this still going to be family operated? Yes. Uh, Ms. Ms. Chase. son, wasn't it? That was daughter. The daughter that started the. Yep. Yeah, she still operates it. Is it just additional fitness studio or is this going to be a gym piece? It's a fitness studio. So it'll be like, I think they're going to put another bathroom in there, um, maybe a changing room, something like that. But it's just continuing to be a fitness studio. They'd want to expand their um, offering to, to kids. I don't know what age kids, but maybe. Are age competitions there where they would have a full house like on 106 on Green Street for Mass Premier Courts? I, I don't think so. It's not a, it's, it's like, um, it's a fitness studio, so you, you pay to go, and you get X number of big enough, Jeff, shots a year, yeah. For CrossFit competitions. Yeah, I, yeah I don't know, but I'll ask. <coughs> I'll yeah. find out. Right. Bill, I have a question on how you got to your count of 59. Yep. I know you just explained it, but it didn't make a lot of sense. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so we're required to have 79 spaces right. up in the corner. Right. So multiply 79 by... 75% gives you 59.1 59. or something like that, right? Right. So right now there are 46 um, striped parking spaces on the lot. There's 23 around the fitness studio, and there's 23 that serve Chase Lumber. So that's, I think it's 40, it's 45. Okay, so you're actually counting the ones at Chase, because you would yes. said the gravel was going to stay separate. Right. But we, we have to have paved parking. Okay. So the paved parking would be the 45 existing paved parking spaces oh, plus a 14 added. additional that will stripe and is yeah. paved in the rear. Is, is the rear parking in Chase currently striped? Cur no. no. No, that's all. The way it works is, I, you, I don't know if you've been up there, it's, yeah. it's a drive around. Yeah, right. So you yeah. pull around, you order, you drive around, they put your stuff in and you drive away. I mean, there are, there are spaces right in the front where the two doors go in, where people go into shop for like cabinets or you know right. other things of that nature, right. you know hardware, for stuff chance, like that. Correct. For chance. <clears throat> but I would say, from my own personal experience of, of shopping there for, for for Mayfair, that most of it is like you know, go in, check your order, drive around, pick up any lumber or any other right. materials you have around the side that's closest to us, and exit. There's not really much parking for the client base there. So one of the things um, I'll mention is, is I've done <coughs> two facilities like this, but, but they were custom built. So I don't know if anybody's been down to Hingham Lumber and Hingham on Route 3A. I, I was the engineer for that project. And if you crank down, down in Hingham, or actually it's Cohasset. Hingham, that's a good story, but it's Cohasset, but it's Hingham Lumber. But um, if you crank those Cohasset numbers, the amount of parking required for a retail facility is massive. So one of the things we talked about with the building commissioner down there was, look, the, the queue should count as parking because that's what you do. You know, you order your stuff or you pull in, so the queue is parking. So I don't think it's a stretch to not necessarily consider that here, but at least in the back of your head when you're deciding whether or not it's having the 25% reduction is viable to accept that queue. You can see how big the building is. I don't know the number of queues it would take, but it would probably take 20, 25 cars if they're actually queued in there. Um, would the additional paved spaces around the corner have to be dedicated? Uh, no. No, I, we've, it's not something I think that I remember you, you've ever done, and I will, what I would point you to is like the state hospital. So you have the state hospital around the, um, the back. It's a combination of office and apartments and condos, and none of those spaces are um, dedicated. dedicated. So it's, it's, it's definitely something that the board in the past, when you've had multiple uses on one facility, have not required. So from that parking area that's in the Chase lot, in their lumber yard, which is, which is gated. So they would have to have somebody to, to operate that gate. Well, the gate, I think that the Chase lumber, if this was ever going to be used, I think those would be for um, employees. employees. That's what I, if I was Don Chase, I'd say you guys are parking there and leave the spaces out front for the. 
So the employees. Say on that regards, then you wouldn't need a dedicated uh, pedestrian walkway to get to that building. You'd be walking through the Chase Lumber parking lot if you were <coughs> to park. Um, what are the hours of operation of the business? I don't know. I, I mean, Seven if was, days a week? I don't know. I would say it's a gym. I'm guessing, but I'll find out. I mean, the gym I go to is like 5.30 in the morning till like 7 o'clock at night, and it's six days a week. So. Yeah, but you have to consider that this is, uh, it's mostly classes that they do. So it's, it's group classes. So it's not that, you know, I can go in at whatever time right. and, and no, I you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I've driven by it during the day and it's not open. So I, I imagine that it's open early in the morning and then in the, uh, in the later, yeah, in the evening, yeah. yeah. That's, I go to a gym and that's exactly right. That's right. It's open in the morning and it's open at night. <clears throat> Starting at like four o'clock. But I'll find out. I'll find out about if they do tournaments and I'll find out about hours of operation. Any other questions? No. Actually, it says hours of operation are 6 to 9 30 a.m. and 4 to 6 p.m. There so. you go. Oh. Yeah. What are you going to do? How many that's, days? That's today. So they're open seven days a week. Yep. No, they're closed Sundays, excuse me. Okay. And Monday's 5 a.m. to noon and then 4 to 7. So it's very split. It's a few hours in the morning, a few hours in the afternoon. Okay. That's great. Well, thank you very much for your input, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll find out about the tournaments. Are you guys here to make any comment on that particular thing? Okay. <coughs> It being uh, sometime past 7.15 p.m., we have public hearings on a variety of uh, Warren articles. The first <coughs> one is uh, the Foxborough Zoning Bylaw to amend Section 11.1 definitions and Section 3.1.6d use for a new definition for warehouse and self-storage mini warehouse to delete truck terminals slash general commodity public warehouse use. So, are we required to read this into the record, or what the the actual definitions and everything? That's no, there? no. Would you like me to uh, summarize? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you, and and I know you know this board has talked about these zoning articles several times, but this is the official public hearing required for a zoning amendment um, that's scheduled to be discussed on May 8th at special town meeting. It starts at 7.30 at the high school. Um, so this first article uh, has to is, is Article 12, and um, it has to, the, the warrant has been published, so this number will stick. We, we tend to not put article numbers in um, public hearing notices just because we never know for sure what the final article numbers will be. But as of today, um, it is finalized, so Article 12. Um, will be with is with respect to zoning and um, uh, for warehouse definition. Um, also talking about an existing trucking terminal, um, public. What, what is the terminology? Public warehouse. Um, commodity. Have public it here. Warehouse. Here we go. Warehouse trucking terminals. General commodity public warehouse. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, I feel like does that always say warehouse there? I feel like I have to fix that. Seems like it might be a typo. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my handout. We have two handouts here. We have one handout is the explanatory, and then we have this, which is not, not an official document. I just didn't have the official warrant at the time. Yep. And um, so I wanted to make sure you had the actual language from the warrant, so it's kind of an excerpted version. So um, just to start back from square one for anybody walking, watching from home, um, last summer um, it was brought to light, I think, to a lot of people in town and um, the board. Uh, about our zoning definition, our zoning, our use table, uh, particularly as it 
uh, pertain to trucking terminals. Um, that sort of caused us to ask the question of, you know, does Foxborough want to, right now we allow trucking terminals um, in town? And I think um, there was a consensus, at least amongst the members that attended the public hearing for Route 1, Route 1 you know, that that wasn't something. And I think this board brought up a lot of concerns uh, around trucking terminals and just that general use in nature. Um, so we, we, after that time, um, I'm not, still not sure what was going to happen to 2 Washington. We decided to take a hard look. Um, with this article, we are uh, creating a definition of self-storage mini warehouse. Uh, we have that use in our use table today, but we don't have a definition. This will assist the building commissioner um, in any sort of future enforcement or determinations that we now have a definition. Then the next part of the article has to do with a new definition of warehouse. As of today, we don't have a definition of warehouse. We do have a definition of trucking terminal, general commodity, public warehouse, but that's all one definition. <coughs> so what we're proposing to do, and it's rather lengthy, is create a definition of warehouse um, that allows a, a general warehouse use but restricts otherwise some of these newer forms of warehouse iterations we've seen evolve and that I think most of the concerns last summer came from. Things like fulfillment centers or other types of high volume, you know, where you're not just storing things for the medium or the short or the long term, but you're actually maybe taking them in, repackages it, repackages it, repackaging them, processing them, or somehow doing them and then having them go out directly to a consumer. Or um, so we're trying to <coughs> avoid that. We do want to allow folks to store their materials. Um, we do have plenty of warehouses in town. Um, that use alone for your more traditional warehouse has not has been something we've had a lot of complaints about. There will be some trucks associated with that. We're, we're always going to have some trucks in town. I think the goal here is to ensure that we're not attracting um, heavily trucking oriented businesses, kind of like what we saw where there were hundreds of tractor trailers going to be stored on the site, you know, and dozens of bays, and really it was really centered around the trucking and the input and the output of goods as opposed to where a warehouse is more about the storage of goods. It might be short term, we might still see some trucks, but it's not going to be at the same level where you're just there. It's just a more of a short term um, turnaround spot. Um, so the way we structured this first Article 12 is first to create these definitions, self-storage mini warehouse and then warehouse. That's so that they exist today. The, the body would vote on those first. Then we'd go into the use table, and that would be to create a new, um, new use for this new definition, warehouse. So right now we don't call out warehouse. All the warehouses that have been done in town have been done on a, another more general provision of the bylaw, and actually has been allowed mostly by right. That's why we've seen a lot of, this board hasn't seen you know, as many as you might think you would because it hasn't been by special permit. We're now proposing that warehouses would be by special permit in all districts that they're currently this use, the trucking terminal public warehouse use is allowed. So we're not changing that. We're just taking away the trucking terminals and the commodity and the public warehouse that were terminology, replacing it with warehouse. And then finally, this last complicated part of this four-part article <laughs> is deleting that use, truck terminal, um, what is it, trucking terminal, general commodity, public warehouse, so we'd have to delete it. So we, we bundled those because we wouldn't want to do one and not the other of those. They kind of are almost an all or nothing proposition, and it's somewhat sequential so that we create the new definitions, we create the new use, and then finally when we have those in place, we delete the old use. So that's kind of the logic between Article 12. Barney, any, um, okay, any thoughts on that? Um, Barney's here as my support for <laughs> and co-drafter on many, many of these things. Um, all right, so anything, anybody from the public? I guess I'm not the one who asked that, but through the chair. <laughs> Anybody? No problem. Okay. You did just get a certificate, so. I did. I now am a supervisor, so. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to move on to the next article, which is going to be Article 13, and that is um, something I think I would ask Barney to come up to the table for, just because I think he could do a good job explaining 
the reasoning behind this one and would be nice to hear from someone else. So the, again, this is a public hearing for the warrant article 13 for Foxborough Zoning Bylaw, Amend Section 11.1, .1, Definition Throttle Graveyard, Setback, Tattoo Parlor, and Junkyard. Are we equating tattoo parlors with those other uses? <laughs> no. <laughs> nope. Just happen to be a good place for them? I'm yeah, we're just cleaning up. We're doing some housekeeping. One public before we stop the next one. Do we need to do that? Do we need sorry, to close what? The, do we need to close the, the first public hearing before we... I guess you should, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing um, for 11.1 uh, .1 definitions in Section 31.6, new definition, warehouse, et cetera, et cetera. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, quickly, um, while I have you here then, you know what happens next. Do, would you like to make a quick, quick report on that, um, to whether the board supports this article, the warehouse article? All those in favor of doing and the why? report? And <laughs> why? Because we talked about it exhaustively. Yes. <laughs> in favor of doing such a report to the, to the body? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move forward then. Oh, me. Okay. Oh, no, you. Go. For yeah. Article 13. <laughs> Sorry, I'm writing notes and then I realized I thought you guys were waiting for me. Do, do I need to introduce myself? or? <laughs> uh, Barnett over at 10 Ames Road, uh, Chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals. So the definitions that are in Article 13 at least um, definitions of auto graveyard, tattoo parlor, and junkyard were requested by the um, building commissioner. Um, junkyard is currently defined, tattoo parlor is not, and auto graveyard is not, even though those particular words or, or terms are utilized in the uh, table of uses. Um, the definition for setback is something that I discussed with the, uh, with the building commissioner. And that arose out of a question that came to our attention. And this definition is consistent with how both the building commissioner, past and present, and the zoning board have um, addressed that issue. So, so each of these definitions would be clarifying a term that either is defined or is currently undefined and giving the building commissioner the appropriate enforcement authority that he feels he needs. There is a question, however, that I have with the definition of auto graveyard, yep. and I want to bring that to your attention because it's been brought to my attention by members of the um, advisory committee. If you look at the definition of auto graveyard, the first sentence, the last clause, the words that state pending their destruction, removal to another location, or other disposition. That has been in there from the time I first prepared this definition. It was not until individuals on ADCOM, and this was after Paige and I met with them, questioned us about it, that I started to think that perhaps what I am doing there is both inconsistent right. with the second sentence and also restricting the definition. Uh, when you think of a graveyard, you think of the final resting place, whether it's of a person's bones or of junk. Mm -hmm. In this case, perhaps I'm creating a situation of purgatory because something else will occur after something is stored and collected yeah. there. So I think there are really two alternatives we can, we can go with. Number one is to keep the wording as it is, and at some point in time, the building commissioner and or the zoning board would have to uh, deal with it, or amend it at town meeting. And I have two suggestions as to an amendment at town meeting. Number one would just be to delete those words altogether, Number two would be to delete the word pending and put it in its place, which may include their destruction removal to another location or other disposition. I think it's best if we just eliminate that clause altogether. I but would agree. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving it to your discretion. Either way, it's, uh, it, would, it would take an amendment at town meeting. So is it started from dismantled to disposition? Is that what we get theoretically? Get? So we would say, you know, ruined, dismantled, or inoperable motor vehicles or motor vehicle parts, period. Okay. So again, the words pending their destruction, removal to another location or other disposition would be eliminated by an amendment at town meeting. Question yep. on the second sentence. Is it, um, are we trying to set up um, almost like an alternative there that if it includes all that plus other items of junk? Yes. 
and then it's not an auto graveyard. Correct. As long as there's other stuff there besides right. auto parts right. or whatever. Right. So if you have washing machines and yeah. old couches, et cetera, it could be considered a junkyard. Better this would also be in. consistent, yeah. you know, w without that clause that we we're just talking about, would be consistent with the definition in the, um, in the state statutes that deals with the regulation of junkyards. It's a little wordier, yep. and I think it's a little bit more, a little bit clearer. But it would be consistent with the uh, state statutory definition. Any other questions? Anything from your page? No. So I think um, would the board then um, be open to recommending on town meeting floor, maybe this board actually making the motion to amend it to by deleting the whole pending their destruction and so on? Is that? Maybe that, if you wanted to take a vote on that, based on that elimination of that language, might be good. I, I actually think that's the cleaner way to do it. Mm -hmm. so just one. just yeah. take it right out. So, do we need a motion, or what do you want to do with the? Just well, you could move to close the hearing, and then move to recommend it with that um, deletion, and then we'll have to go about, you know, the mechanisms at town <coughs> meeting to do it. I'll probably include it in the report. That you know that deletion would be part of it, but I know you'd have to have a motion written um, on town meeting and submit it. Yes. Yeah. So Barney and I could work on that and mm -hmm. get that. Before we close that hearing, can sure. we go on a junkyard? Mm -hmm. So um, maybe I'm being overly sensitive here, but we've just been kind of through some junkyard dog stuff. So in the last <laughs> line on that, the abandonment of junk. Do we have a definition of junk? Yes. Oh, do we? There was a definition in the bylaw. Yes. All right. Uh, parenthetically, I spoke with um, the building commissioner this afternoon about the auto graveyard issue, and he's yep. in agreement that we should delete that wording. Okay. Okay. And then um, I don't know if you, I, I might have missed it. The tattoo parlor, we all know we're not going for a tattoo parlor. That's just creating a definition. But we are seeing some cosmetic use of, um, at, like, estheticians under a medical care. We are seeing, you know, eyebrows and that type of thing. So we want to make sure it's clear the differentiation between sort of body art, body art, and then more aesthetic art. So this kind of helps Scott in his determinations. Keep that line clear. So under current regulations, you know, are they allowed to, are we allowed to have traditional tattoo parlors in town or we're not? No, I, remember, I think there's I think one in place. The, um, I think on Route 1. Yeah, we have, the we have to provide. We have to fill out in one district, yeah. S1. Yeah, it's yeah. in the S1. Okay. By special permit. <laughs> yeah. So it's restricted. Yeah. I'll make a motion. We close the public hearing for a warrant in Article number 13. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, you may. I have a question on setbacks. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I like to. I like it. It simplifies things. But if you go to section 4.1.6 in our current zoning, at the, at the end of it, the last line, it's about yards. Every part of a required yard shall be open, blah, 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 provided no such projection now it's been in the minimum side yard more than 24 inches of talking about chills. But here's my question. This is the last line. Unroofed entrance porches or terraces, which do not rise above the height of the floor level of the ground floor, may extend to a required yard space, provided the area shall not exceed 200 square feet. Now, this this definition doesn't include that. Doesn't include that, mm -hmm. which I, I think we should get rid of the last line of 4.1.6. This is clearer. Mm -hmm. So I'm just pointing that out. I don't know if you could do it on town meeting or if that's next time. Yeah, Maybe we next could. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll have to add that to our list. Add it to your list. <laughs> I mean, as so, long as, as long as, I mean, it's going to be an interpretation, and as long as um, building commissioner and Barney are okay with the new definition, mm -hmm. it really, really doesn't matter. But what'd you need? Oh no, I was just going to grab my piece of paper back. Oh. <laughs> so I don't lose. It goes to my. It's part of my thing. I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I so we were done. okay, I made the motion to close the public hearing. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> and uh, we'll show in the report that we're going to make an amendment as necessary. Okay. Article 14, 
is um, to see if the town will vote to amend the code of the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, chapter 275, and um, new subsection addition and uh, of 10.517 limited site plan review. Okay, so on this one, um, I feel like a broken record because we've said this so much, but we have to do it. Um, this comes about, um, as you are aware, when we did the um, site plan review, limited site plan review um, for the 25 Chestnut Street site, there had been a case where um, the applicant had gone to the zoning board saying that because child care facilities are exempt under zoning and you can't require a special permit that site plan review wouldn't be required and in the past it is administratively handled by the building commissioner. Um, ultimately the zoning board did not support that and supported the building commissioner. They came through here and we did our limited site plan review and the project was approved. Um, under the state statute, you know, it, it's a use that is allowed. We can just look at certain provisions. Um, so what we did, Barney and I, Gabby and I worked together and came up with a new subsection under the site plan review bylaw that would basically codify this new process. It's, it's more limited than the full site plan review um, because it only reflects those provisions that the state statute calls out that we can look at. Um, but it does this way provide a transparent and clear process for everybody to use, um, no questions. And it, it follows the um, process we did follow as a result of the zoning board's um, findings. So um, we are recommending that this be adopted. And um, we're already doing it. And so it, it just codifies something that we're already doing. Questions? I have, to, I have to say that um, doing it this way uh, was really helpful in working uh, for the with the Hindu temple. Mm -hmm. right. um, so this is uh, this is a good step. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> okay. Nothing further in terms of the. No, it's 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 lengthy, but it's but it it's like, covers everything. Right. It is lengthy. All right, so okay, I'll make a motion to approve Article 14. Are we going to close the public hearing? Oh, first? Sorry. Anybody in the public? <coughs> My bad. <laughs> Barney and Bill. And <laughs> okay. Somebody. It's a motion to close the public hearing on Article 14. Second. And those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now I'll make a motion to accept Article 14 as presented. Make a positive recommendation. And make a positive recommendation to tell me. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Next is uh, public hearing warrant article of Foxborough Zoning Bylaw Amendment Section 10.5. What did we just do that? 10.53. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, one uh, amendment section 1.3.1, 9.6.10, and 9.7.4. 10.55 to replace town planner with the director of land use and economic development and publish our certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't um, it, is it convenient? She got the certificate at the same night. I'm telling you. We're going to have to add more letters. Um, <laughs> so this is pretty much a housekeeping item, you know, interspersed through the zoning bylaw with references to the town planner. I actually haven't even been called that since I started. I was the planning director, but... You know, that's just being nitpicky. So at this point, while we were doing our zoning cleanup, we just figured we would clean it up. So we referred to my actual title and then or designee thereof. So since Gabby, we all know who really does the work around here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a, um, a nameplate that says designee. There we go. Woo! I like that. And I'm going to get a one that says winning supervisor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Make a motion to close the public hearing on Article 15. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I make a recommendation? I guess I will. I'll make a recommendation to accept Article 15 uh, as written, and I'll make a positive recommendation uh, to on town meeting floor. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 
moving right along. Article 16. Uh, Foxborough Zoning Bylaw to amend section 9.4.2, new language for special permit in the S1 district. So the history on this one was um, we discovered that this was an, um, we, what we believe to be a throwback from older provisions that required that an applicant um, for a special permit within the S1 district um, meet with the Board of Selectmen. Yes. Um, and in advance of a public hearing. And um, what was really interesting is that it really, it was very ambiguous as to the intent. It just basically said, prior to the re required public hearing before the special permit granting authority, the applicant shall meet informally with the, board of, with the select board. The select board may present its comments to the SPGA before the public hearing date. So we're thinking that was at a time when maybe the, the select board had a more active role in development and day-to-day -day operations. At this point, it actually puts them in kind of an uncomfortable position because they really have no jurisdiction. That came up with the warehouse, it did. didn't it? Yeah. Right. it did. So, um, but rather than just delete it, what we did is, um, and this was Barney's idea, was actually to, to throw me in there. Um, then that way, um, before an, S, you know, an application for S1 gets comes to us, they actually have to meet with our office, and we'll, that'll give us an opportunity to look at the permitting required and kind of get some heads up for all of us. So um, we just are suggesting we incorporate that process rather than sending them to the select board, which kind of throws the select board into the fire and also confuses people as to why and what is going to be accomplished with that meeting. So the old language that says that they have to do that, is that going to be deleted or? That would be deleted in its entirety and replaced with the, yes. the okay. this, yes. Any other questions? Cool. Anyone in the audience? Do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing on Article 16. Second that. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion for recommendation. Come on, Jeff. You haven't done one yet. And I had to make a motion that we uh, recommend uh, Article 16 as written and uh, prepare that recommendation for town meeting. Is there a second to that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 17. Um, one article to zoning bylaw amend section 9.1.42, new language for special permit in the, in the S1 district. Oh, no, sorry, that was the one we just did. Right. Rather to say, Foxborough zoning bylaw amend section 10.66 to replace wording. Yes, so this one is really simple. Um, again, when we were looking at the bylaw, we realized that um, uh, the section regarding environmental impact statements refers to a paragraph D. However, in that entire section, there is no such paragraph. Everything is num num you know, numbered. So um, looking back at old bylaws, we discovered that prior to codification, there was a paragraph D in that. So we think it was um, a typo that wasn't caught when the recodification occurred. So we just simply are recommending that it gets renumbered. Um, rather than being lettered. No change to the content. What year did we do that recodification? Do you remember? 2009. 2012? I think it was 12. 12. I think, or 11? I think 11, because I think Mark Resnick was still here. And he left in 2011. We started talking about it in 10, 2010. Yeah. So a good 12 years. <laughs> 12 years later, we got this. OK. Is there a motion to close public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a motion to recommend? Yeah, I... Make a motion to recommend Article 17 as written mm -hmm. and a positive recommendation to town meeting four. Is there a second? Oh, no, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, that's all of us. That's it. That's all of them? So I do have one request. Um, so this handout that was done. I did find a typo on it, um, on the front. I'm glad we talked about it, because I need to raise a delete warehouse at the beginning. of It should say truck terminal, general commodity public warehouse. So I will fix that. Um, but we'd like to have this available at town meeting as a handout. Um, and Frank would like, prior to anything going to town meeting floor, he would like the, uh, the uh, planning board to vote to do this, to vote you know, to have this available at town meeting. So 
if you were comfortable with that, we could go ahead and get this produced for the May town meeting and get it circulated in advance, hopefully, as well. This or this? The, um, <laughs> the summary. The left the hand. Left hand. Okay. Yeah. So you, we need a motion for that? Yes. I'd make a motion that the board affirm the use of this summary with modifications as a handout at uh, annual town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. very well. All right. So. Well, yeah, when were you uh, a selectman? Excuse me? When were you a selectman? Uh, I think 1987. Uh, I think you're right. Seven to 90? Yeah. yeah. So you were the one who brought up the selectman. Um, when they changed the zoning back then, the selectman did site plan. Remember that? Selectman used to do site plan. Yeah. So then the planning board took it over but the selectmen were a little peeved, so they still wanted a little piece of it, and you were one of the members of the board there. I think it was you, Hickox, <laughs> and... And, uh, Jerry? Dick Thompson? Oh, Dick Thompson. Yeah. Oh, or so after it was, that, it was... It was uh, appropriate Mike that you voted to... Yeah. to <laughs> 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 Mike? <clears throat> okay. Thank you for that bit of history. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I can't remember yesterday. <laughs> okay. It being some, well, it's not, yeah, it's sometime past 7.45 p.m. We continue public hearing site plan review 61 East Belcher Road for construction of a 6,250 plus or minus square foot one-story building to be used as contractor base for Blue Diamond Realty Trust, or as I like to call them, Blue Oyster Cult. <laughs> So, Mr. Chairman, good evening. <clears throat> For the record, my name is Bill Buckley from Bay Colony Group. I'm here representing um, Blue Diamond, and with me are uh, Mr. Mahoney, Miss Mahoney. And what we have is a, and actually you have in front of you in a, in a small version, is we've met with the board a couple of times, I think at least twice, and the we've had a modification based on the comments that were given to us by the Talents Consultant and Environmental Partners. We went through two iterations of comments with them. Um, the second iteration was um, back in uh, March, and they were fairly minor. I, I met with Ms. Jordan on them at the time, and um, you know we agreed to make the changes on the plans. So we haven't done that yet. Actually, I have done them yet, but I, I have done them, but I haven't submitted them because I wanted to just um, do one more set of revisions and include the, any approval and any issues that um, were brought up tonight. But what I can do is just very briefly go through the, the small changes that they requested us to make. And so you can judge for yourself whether you want to see them for. But so this is the drawing. Um, and this would be sheet three, if you want to look on it yourself. So the comments that were made by the consultant is that they wanted us to make sure that this swale in the back was 1%, so we added some spot grades to show that. At the entrance here, because I don't know if you recall, but we moved, we slid the building, we slid the whole thing like 25 feet or so in order to move it further away from this wetland at the request of the conservation. So that moved us right up to the edge of the driveway here. So environmental partners was concerned and said, we should put a bollard here and stripe this so that cars don't get hit. So we agreed to that. Um, they wanted us to add a note around the outside because the site is gonna be heavily um, Rated and around the edges, we're going to be leaving a 10-foot buffer strip, which is what's required under the zoning. So we show a limit of clearing, but they wanted to make sure that we, after we cut these slopes down, that we permanently stabilize them. So we added that note to that. And then actually the other, only other major, actually none of them were major, but the only other um, change to the drawing was this on 
sheet five if you want to go to that. And they want us to add this note that says the shown shall conform to the Mass DOT standard M2022. And that was it. So um, just open any questions. Anything else? No. Are you going to contain that sloped area there? Just a riprap or something? <clears throat> No, it'll be a it'll be a three to one slope, and the reality is, is if it's if it's dirt, um, we will loam and seed it, and if it's just ledge, which I'm guessing up in this area here, Maybe, yeah. it will just be stabilized by itself because if it's a rock slope. But perhaps down in these areas here, um, you know, we'll be after loam and seed. Up here, this is going to be rock. It's not going to have to be stabilized. We understand, we know that it requires um, to remove more than 200 yards of material. We expect that to be one of the conditions which requires a earth removal permit. Um, reading earth removal permits, I just didn't know this, but it was um, they're only good for a year. So this is not a one-year operation. So we haven't kind of figured that out yet, but we will. Um, we have to go before the selectmen for that. But for now, we won't be doing any earth removal off the site. There'll be earth, there'll be removal on the site. I'm sorry, there'll be earth movement on the site. There'll be production of material on the site. But nothing will be taken off the site. So we get our earth removal permit, which is what the permit is. Moving off the site is what the permit is for. So that that concludes me. I'm answer any questions or not really. I'm just trying to go through environmental partners and and you know BCGs you sure. know commentary back and forth, and it looks like most of them have been closed. There's a couple of items that you've already reviewed with us. Some things about spot grades and a minimum of one percent slope. And so, Bill, are you changing access to this? Or are you still proposing to use the uh, driveway? Yep, it's a driveway. Although we do have down here, we are showing this is a gravel road. Right. There is an easement through here. There's an easement through here that allows the access in the future. But that is not. It's it's steep. Yeah, so anyway, that's you, not. You would have that in conversation. Yeah, that's yeah. not. So. It's not going to be an everyday access. The access will continue to be down through this okay. private driveway. So that access actually goes. It just it, it abuts the De Geralmo's property. And it goes in. It goes through De Geralmo's property. Yeah, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. That was part of the, um, the variance. ZBA granted forever ago um, for the site for that private driveway, which is you know not allowed under our zoning. The frontage is on East Belcher Road, but all those lots access off the private driveway. And at the time, SNS Realty Trust owned some of that back land. Frank Splane came in and asked the board to, um, as a condition of approval, to uh, to grant access to that through that that lot, which is now the De Girolamo lot, but at the time it was nothing. And that, that's a condition. So, and, and Mr. Mahoney has been talking to Mr. De Girolamo about it. It's, it's not a surprise. I personally have talked to Mr. De Girolamo so I can first person answer that he understands he's seen the plans. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is steep. That's Bill, I, yeah. I do have one question. Um, and it didn't occur to me before, otherwise I would have asked you. Sure. Um, the uh, the driveway, who's you know, is who's who's who owns it? Is it is it everybody? My my concern is that you know, with all the amount of trucks that are going to be needed to remove the the earth, the, yeah. the earth and all of that, you know, who's gonna take care of the damage to the road? So it's a private it's a it's a private driveway <clears throat> that everybody has a right to p pass over. There's no association to take care of it. What normally ends up is Mr. Mahoney ends up taking care of it because he has the the ex well, expertise, person. right? He's well, he's the expertise too with it. So there, there is the answer is it was a, a not a mistake by any, 
it should have been done at, when the lots were conveyed out, but it hasn't been. So now everybody owns that portion of the driveway that's on their property. property yeah. <laughs> but you know, that they, they, they have to deal with it because it's their livelihood. So I'm not sure it's anything the <clears throat> board would be interested in getting involved in. It hasn't been an issue. I know that Paige talked to the police and fire in the first go around, and I know there's documentation in your files that they don't have an issue with it. So I, I guess that answers it. It's not a probably the answer we want yeah, to hear. This is that where like when if cars start, uh, trucks and cars are parking along that driveway, and how does that? I mean, just operationally. I know you're saying that it's not, we don't want to get involved in that stuff, but right. we're also the first one that seem, seems to get complaints, or maybe the second, I don't know, maybe you guys get them first. But um, moving forward, as we see more intensity of use, the, the issues we typically see are, you know, access maybe being restricted, and again, condition of road, deterioration. So right. who are we going, like, when they, if they call us and say, oh, these people are using it so much, you know, who, who do we turn to? I mean, is that, can we make, this applicant is he willing to take on maybe not legal responsibility but at least to say that you know he'll maintain the road to you know passable condition or whatever we need for public safety or i i, I mean yeah, yeah, he would i would say yes because he has to maintain it for himself the access his facility and there's no parking allowed on the road i mean there's no parking signs all up and down the access road i mean occasionally someone will park there but it's not allowed right and it was not allowed i think you granted the permit originally 20 years ago. It's a it's one business that creates the issue. So um, so I guess the short answer is you just heard it. If it's if it's an issue with maintenance of the the road, Mr. Mahoney would deal with it. As far as parking and stuff, though, I mean. Yeah, enforcement wise, that's tough because that, you're not going to be able to manage enforcement. Right. And there are signs, you say, and people park up and down the road anyway? Well, there are signs, and people park right in front of the signs. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, they'll move. Um, yeah. But it's, you know, the thing is the timing is not really an issue as much for us. Just because we're there early in the morning and we're there late in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, we're not there usually on the weekends. Weekends are tough, you know. That's, yeah. That would be tough on the weekends, but we're not there. Do they have after school stuff too? No. It was, it was school. I'd say later in the day, some days there's nothing happening. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of hit or miss, right? I think the weekends would be the worst. Are they? You know, yeah. and I don't know that because I, we have cameras, I can see what's going on in the cameras if I look, but again, we're not there, so it's, it's not hindering you. Yeah. Know? Right. And, and back to what Bill said, is we have the second building on the left. Yeah. So the way those lots were, were done is everyone owns in front of their building for maintenance. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'm the only guy that could have the ability to pave the entire road because we have all that stuff to do that. So, and then we own the end lot. So right. Really, I would say that whether I like it or not, we'll end up maintaining the road because we have to go all the way to the end. Yep. You know I mean? So to get if, you were, if you were a person that was in that subdivision, um, clearly we use most of the road. And, and like Bill said, there should have been an association put in place. It was never done, and, and um, currently we maintain the road ourselves. You know, fixing manual covers or whatever. And, uh, and it doesn't seem to be that much interest. You know, I guess maybe they watch us fix it so they're not really interested. There's a surprise. <laughs> but that's how it is, you know. into the record there? Um, no, I mean the environmental, the, 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 the most commentaries from environmental partners, um, the Wildlands Trust, you know, uh, right. put some things in there at one point back in December. Um, Gabby had some correspondence back and forth with them. or fire in here. I don't know if 
fees the fees have been paid so there was there was documentation from police and fire was wasn't there? yeah I think so yeah I definitely have emails in there from Dave Laracy saying there were no issues yeah. with the access and that have no concerns um, Scott Turner that's pretty much it so unless there's something in the back here I missed Yeah, we had reviewed previous correspondence at the first hearing. Yeah. The first hearing, we were ex we still waiting for comments from environmental partners, so that's why we con had to continue the hearing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's just old, old stuff in here, too, from yeah. John Mitchell Moore and, <coughs> and the CBA, so. I don't think there's uh, much here for us to have to comment on. That being said, is there a uh, Make a motion, motion to close the public hearing. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Looking for an approval here? Yep. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. With standard, With standard conditions. Standard conditions, yes ma'am. And the understanding that the applicant will Continue to maintain the road in its current <laughs> condition. <laughs> Second. And the plans revised as discussed at the meeting. Yeah, that too. And subject to earth removal. Man. The board of select, select board. Anybody else? Just throwing it all in there. It's okay. Second. Second. Carry seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 What a Jeff's looking very thoughtful over there. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Being a good neighbor to your neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else we have tonight? Second. Uh, from uh, on Washington Street. We did that. We did, we did that. that. We did yeah. that. Good. All right. Motion to uh, adjourn. Gary Sutton. There you yeah. go. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Have a good evening.